The next speaker is Annette from Karlsruhe Institute of Technology. Uh, and uh, I asked her to talk about collaboration and cooperation, but yesterday, just before we parted, she said I will change my uh, presentation. So I have no idea what she's going to speak about, uh, but hopefully she will tell us herself. I stick, I stick to the topic. Okay. <laughs> no worries. <laughs> and we didn't party because I have to finish the presentation. <laughs> Um, so, hello everybody. I'm very happy to present uh, my research today. Uh, also here with me is Professor Shevin Hakshanu. He's also the founder of the German Lean Construction Institute, sitting in the back. Um, yeah, and I will try to, to be in time. So just starting now. Um, first, I want to say something about the current situation in Germany. And then I will show you the steps of my research, defining the terms cooperation and collaboration because they are quite used interchangeable. Um, then I will tell you something about incentive system, the tendering procedure, and I will come to a case study uh, at UCSF. So these are three major projects, ongoing projects in Germany. And as you can see from here, um, they are over budget and over time, and they are still not finished. And this data is actually from 2013. So what you can see in here, it's not the end. <laughs> so what does it mean? Um, public projects in Germany are complex, as every other major project, uncertain and dynamic. We have a si strict separation between design and the construction phase. A design bit bill tendering with uh, selecting the lowest bit. <coughs> the contract is transactional, so it's fixed and unflexible. And we have the construction supply chain who's um, split into several pieces. Um, information knowledge are not shared. Um, people are not integrated in this process. So we have a competence gap. Um, decisions are made individual and the risk is transferred from the public client to the contractor. We have hierarchical structures and missing commitments. So that is, uh, that is the situation at the moment. And we have to keep in mind that construction projects are not um, doing by one person. So we have um, different stakeholders and the stakeholders have a corporate culture and a business objective. And the project, of course, is also a project culture and a project objective. So, and everything of these has to match to make a project work. So, um, steps of my research are, I thought, okay, we have a situation where no collaboration exists. So, what can we do to change this? So, we could maybe use incentive system to support this collaboration and increase the project performance. But as we are in, in, in context to projects, we have to have flexible incentive systems um, which consist of different modules. So one research question is now, what does collaboration actually mean? And what is the differences between the terms cooperation and collaboration? As I said before, they are used interchangeable. <coughs> so I did a literature review and find a lot of characteristics and based on this uh, literature review, I find 11 main characteristics. So as you can see from the spider web diagram, um, you have 11 main characteristics and bringing it in context to autonomy to make it more clear. You can see, for example, if you have trust, um, the level of trust in collaboration is very high and in autonomy, very low. So if you be more away from the center, it's very important for the relationship. Uh, compared to that, if you have control, um, collaboration is less controlled and autonomy is very controlled. And um, cooperation is somehow in between both. So we find we find cooperation and collaboration as follow. Collaboration is an interorganizational relationship with a common vision to create a common project organization with a commonly defined structure and a new and jointly developed project culture based on trust and transparency with the goal to jointly maximize the value for the customer by solving problems mutually through interactive processes. 
which are planned together and why, by sharing responsibility, risk, and rewards among the key participants. <laughs> yeah, get some air. <laughs> in contrast to that, cooperation is an interorganizational relationship among participants of a project, which are not commonly related by vision or mission, residing in separate project organization with independent structures where the project culture is based on control and coordination to solve problems independently in order to maximize the value of the own organization. So as you can see from here, these definitions make quite clear how different these terms are and we use them into, as the same, in the same way. Um, the main differences, uh, I would say, is that um, the degree of um, integrating the people is different between cooperation and collaboration. So and now I have to bring it to, you, to the Lean Project delivery system. So how does it look like now in, in the um, Lean construction way? So here you have the Lean Project delivery system defined by Wallat. And as you can see, you have a lot of interfaces between the different project stages. So if I set these definition in context to lean construction and have a look on the principles, the tools, and the organization, there's quite a difference. For example, if you have the last planner system in here, in cooperation, mostly it's used as a controlling instrument. Maybe it's in collaboration, it's more a network of commitment. Why is that? Because the lean organization is different. And here, when you see the culture and leadership, in cooperation, it's, there is no common project culture and you have directive and partly supportive leadership. It's more controlling leadership. Uh, in collaboration, you have more a cultural integration. You build a culture together. And um, leadership has to support the people. Um, it is self-reflected and tr there's a lot of trust in it. So if you have, on the one hand, uh, control, and on the other hand, trust, there will be, the collaboration would be in the end of the trusting line, where we, the autonomy is on the control line, and somehow, cooperation is in between. <clears throat> so Lean Project Delivery calls actually for collaboration. And uh, while developing a project team, participant, and especially the client, need to address the question of which kind of relationship leads to the achievement of the project goals. So he has to know what kind of relationship does he want to have and how, does, how would he like to deliver the project. So then another question arises. How can we change the traditional system to a more collaborative approach to lean construction? So coming from uh, Leving's revolution change process, as you can see in here, it would be our traditional system. So we have to activate the change. We have to manage the change. And we have to stabilize the change. And then we have to balance the new system, our lean system. And therefore, we need incentive. Incentives for implementing uh, collaboration and incentive to support the collaboration when it's implemented. <coughs> So but then there's another question. What is an incentive system, right? So for me, incentive system is not only about bonus or a financial incentive system. Incentive system, and that is what you can see from the literature, it's more. It's about working condition. It's about the organization itself who can be an incentive system. It is about financial social incentives. It is a management system, a system of monetary and non-monetary incentives. So we defined an incentive system as a quantity of all use monetary and non-monetary incentives influencing the collaboration between the project parties. <coughs> so the project team actually is the key who will decide between fail or win of the project. And you have to keep in mind that the, the project team, how they work together depends on the corporate culture, project culture, business objectives, project objectives, working environment, social behavior, contract, and the tendering procedure. And I want to go more in detail about the tendering procedure. 
So because for me, the question was, how can a public client and the project team work together collaborative if the project team is selected based on lowest bid, resulting in an inflexible and fixed contract? And then I built, developed two working hypotheses. The tendering procedure and the form of contract itself are incentives which impact the degree of collaboration between project participants. Design bid build tendering procedure set incentives against collaboration because it leads to speculative behavior of the contractor resulting in unrealistic cost estimates and an intensified focus on claim management. So design bid build makes an unhealthy environment. So the requirement would be change of bid process. And then coming back from the lean project delivery system by Ballad, you have in here, I would like to integrate the tendering procedure to select, to select the project team and everything um, pulled together by an incentive system. So the tendering procedure, it depends if you are a public client, if you're a private client and on which state the tendering will, will be um, depending on the delivery system. So how should the incentive system be designed, implemented and managed to improve collaboration? And what are the requirements and boundaries of the incentive system? So that is actually a question I'm still working on. So I can just show you some, some stuff I did. So I went to UCSF because here we have a public client. And UCSF is working differently. Um, <clears throat> so the purpose of my case study was analyzing the delivery system of IPD-ish and alliancing project of the public construction industry to understand use incentive and the effect on collaboration. And I said IPD-ish because uh, they cannot make the full IPD at the moment. It's not possible. So I went first to UCSF to have a look on their projects. And then in December, I was uh, for one week in Finland to have a look on the Finnish Alliance project. And I'm happy that Maury is also here today and will presenting in the afternoon. <clears throat> the interesting thing with the UCSF is that you can put it in context because it's always about, so every project is differently. So how can we make it comparable? How can we see that it really works and that it makes a ben ben benefit? So um, here we have the analyzed projects. There are seven in total. Then you have the UCSF projects, how they did it before. They changed to best value selection, design build, and also implementing lean tools. And here we have the UC projects who are still doing traditional design bid build. So UCSF gets the opportunity from the regions to change their selection system. <coughs> and now they're doing best value selection. So here we can have data who's comparable. That is a picture of the site. So the interesting thing is that UCSF built a new campus site in here since 2000. And what they did from, from the delivery system is they were in, where is it, the lump sum and CM at risk. That's what they do. And it's more, as you, sorry, as you can see in here, it's more relational than a transactional, um, transactional approach. So that are actually the projects I analyzed um, from 2007 till 2012 was the selection process. And as you can see from here, it's pretty interesting analyzing the project individual and then having a look how UCSF learned from each project and then how the, ev the evolution steps are between projects. So I cannot present you this data today because it's, I'm still working on the data, but there will be a technical report. Um, as soon as I finish to analyze it. And of course, written the technical report. <clears throat> but what I would like to show you, something is in here. So <clears throat> when you can see 
here, that's the change of the budget within the fiscal year. And it's all about projects over 700, 750,000 US dollars. Here you have the fiscal years, and here you have the average of change percentage in percentage um, of UC without UCSF. I can see, sorry for the German word. <laughs> and compared to that, you have here the change, change of budget from UCSF over the fiscal years. So you can see UCSF did also pretty good before the change, but in here when they change, you see here's a major gap and still the changes are, they, the, the budgets are get lower. So they set a budget and now they are not going over budget, they're going under budget. That's what you can see in here. And these ones are showing the standard variation. So it's not the variance, I'm sorry, it's the standard variation. And you see that, that also in the campuses, because you, UC uh, has a lot of campuses, for example, Berkeley, um, UCLA. So all these campuses, you can see here from the standard variation that they vary quite a lot in the changes of the budget. So I guess this one is um, a good example to see by changing the system, the delivery system, and how they select the project team, they get better. So to be on time, I would like to conclude now. <laughs> so why is an incentive system needed? Um, for me, an incentive system is needed to build strong, trustful, and sustainable relationships, to keep promises agreed, share, and share risk, minimizing risks, support information and knowledge sharing, and build transparency. Actually, it should help to realize the optimal delivery system. We need to change from here to here. So thank you very much for your attention. The idea now is that if there are any questions or comments to her presentation, people can speak freely uh, and we hopefully get a good discussion from her presentation. <laughs> when do you expect to be finished with your data? analysis and I hope <laughs> so I hope I can keep my deadline and finish it in maybe June end of May beginning of June that would be great in June. Okay. I hope so <laughs> look forward to it and that Mm -hmm. Right now we are revising our uh, uh, tendering law in Denmark mm -hmm. uh, on the basis of uh, a tendering law that the EU has made. Mm -hmm. The relatively new, I actually don't know when the EU came with the, the new law, uh, but does that work better in uh, collaboration, cooperation? Yes, you th you, I think you mean the competitive bidding, right? Yeah. And I think Maury, where is he? I can't see him. Oh, here you are. Um, because they adapted the concept of the Australian alliancing to Finnish, and they're doing the Finnish alliancing now. And that is actually based on the competitive bidding. And um, I think Maury will tell you more. Or? Yeah. So from the side of the EU, you can do alliancing. Thank you very much, Annette, for, for, for a very interesting presentation. My name is Steen Bonga. I'm from the Technical University of Denmark, a department called DTU Management Engineering. We have been working with uh, forms of, co of co collaboration in Danish construction projects <coughs> for a number of years. Uh, first question could be, how come you didn't uh, uh, refer to the term partnering? Because mm -hmm. uh, as you probably know, I'm pretty sure you know, partnering has been about for yeah. 
20, 30 years now, starting in the US and later in the United Kingdom, and uh, at least for 15 years also in, in Denmark. Uh, within that, that concept, we have uh, done quite a lot of uh, investigation of forms of collaboration. Actually, I don't think in Danish we can distinguish between cooperation and collaboration. We don't have the term uh, to, to distinguish. So that's an interesting question you raise, and I like very much your idea of, of uh, working with incentives as, well, the element that, th that can actually make a difference bet between forms of cooperation. Uh, but first question then, uh, partnering, is that not an issue in, in, in German? Is that why you, did, uh, you didn't mention it? So there were projects where they used partnering mm -hmm. as the model, but I guess not much anymore. Mm -hmm. And I think it's partnering limits the idea of lean construction, actually. Mm -hmm. That's what, what I'm thinking, because it's more cooperative approach than a collaborative approach. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so, uh, so there, there might be some national differences and right. cultural differences. I, I think it would be interesting to study those differences, mm -hmm. also comparing countries like Denmark and Germany, for instance. Of course. Uh, I would say in this country, it's it has become much more normal not to choose your project on the lowest price and right. and to actually consider using uh, this form of tender that we call economically most advantageous in Dan in Danish where you also consider other criteria than price, uh, for instance, the criteria of, of being able to col collaborate. So, so, uh, but, but there's a long way to, uh, to develop this, uh, this approach uh, in, in a much more efficient way. I agree with that. So um, my, my research is more focusing on the public sector. Of course, you have um, public-private partnerships, but I'm not focused on that one, and also, before we talk about partnering, there's also a gap. What do you mean by partnering? Because there's also a range of definitions and maybe your approach in, in your country is more, more cooperative, collaborative than the approach we have in Germany. I don't know, we have to compare it before I can really answer the question very good. Okay. Thank you, Annette. The very first, I should know better than anyone I'm used to the system. <laughs> uh, the first uh, free projects, disaster projects, mm -hmm. one might say, was the Philharmonie, uh, the airport in, in Berlin, and, right. and the railway in Stuttgart. And, <clears throat> well, seen from a bit north of Germany, maybe it's also due to the political decision-making process around public projects, yes. that it goes so entirely wrong. Right. For example, um, the epilomony, uh, it was that the, po the political side was pushing the project so hard, because the, the architects actually said, we need more time um, to, to get more, to describe the details, right? And, um, but the political was, they have to do it at that time, so they just pushed it so hard. That's true. Any more questions? Comments? Yep, yeah, Alan. Mine is um, a question to Stan. Stan, you talk about partnering. Um, my understanding of partnering in UK, and it may be different in other countries, is that um, construction companies really signed up to partnering with, oh, really signed up to partnering um, <coughs> with their customers, with the owners, with the, with the clients. But they continued to screw, mm -hmm. sorry, technical term, the subcontractors. Right. And is that, was that true in Denmark? I think that's pretty much true. Yes. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. um, that for me isn't collaboration right. or cooperation. Right. Also that's screwing. 
<laughs> right? And also, if you, what I show you with the example of implementing last planner, you need the subcontractor to implement the last planner in the right way. And they will not help you and will not be open-minded if you just push them by price. Yeah, I think uh, Alan has a point that, that uh, the introduction of partnering in Denmark did not rightly uh, uh, include the, the subcontractors. There might be differences between, between partnering organizations, uh, of course. Uh, but I would also say that, that in, in this country, we, we, also, al always consider, we often consider lean partnering on site. This is where the, the subcontractors come in, where we give them a, vo a voice uh, to, uh, to uh, well, to speak up in the planning process and in, in the in the des in the alteration of, of the design, et cetera, et cetera. So, so, uh, so, uh, partnering in Denmark could be partnering between the client and the design team, maybe including the main contractor, and uh, then after that, lean on site, uh, which is also a new form of collaboration, obviously, that we'll discuss a lot mm -hmm. uh, on, in this two days, two days from now. <laughs> It seems like there are no more comments, and that's perfect because we reached time now. <coughs> so let's give a hand for Annette. Uh, Thank you.